We're in an undisclosed location. Absolutely. Why does it need to be undisclosed? Uh, well, because uh, as you're going to see, uh, the amount of plant being grown here is uh, very, very, uh, very high. And there's a lot of rip-off that's been happening in the region of Vancouver lately. Uh, we're talking of serious rip-off where people get literally beat up uh, almost to death. And uh, they, they, they just go through the roof, go through the walls, and take everything that these uh, hard farmers have been working uh, so long to build and, and just take it away from them, yeah. And these rip-off artists are targeting... Cannabis just, growers. Just, yes, cannabis grower of large, uh, large quantity cannabis grower. The one that has the, the, good, the, the big licenses, basically. Mm -hmm. Cannabis in Canada is still widely illegal. With a new government entering parliament in 2016, the odds of legalization, further criminalization, or decriminalization of marijuana coming to fruition are still to be determined. But despite that, black market growers and gray market marijuana dispensaries are more prevalent than ever. And the sometimes dangerous and legally dubious process of manufacturing weed oils and other concentrates is rising, with growers investing tens of thousands of dollars to make sheets of potent pot wax. With the legal fate of weed still in the balance, we went to BC, the wild west of Canadian chronic, visited grows operating illegally or semi-legally, met concentrate manufacturers making large quantities of oil in spite of the law, and checked in on the exploding dispensary scene that the federal conservative government is trying to shut down. We're here with an anonymous extract artist to talk to us today about the world of, well, extracts. Thanks so much for uh, sitting here and taking us through it. I guess let's start off with what exactly is an extract? Okay, so uh, the term extract, it doesn't really just have to relate to marijuana. It can relate to using a solvent or medium to extract the essential oils that you would want from a plant or any type of material and be able to concentrate it in a concentrated form. Okay, and so in the case of cannabis, what would be the purpose of having an extract? Okay, so, you know, when extracts first really came around, a lot of people were a little conscious about it because they were conscious about the fact that butane is being used in the process, and they thought that just smoking regular marijuana was uh, safer. But in the long run, if it's made properly, you're not burning any carcinogens, you're not smoking plant material to get the vapors of all of the cannabinoids, so it's much more healthier in retrospect. When we first started looking at a VHO, a lot of people were just using regular butane cans and uh, blasting it through glass tubes and letting the vapor actually out into your environment. Now, if the environment is hot, you have any sparks, any cigarette or flame, that's actually very dangerous for you. We're at Neutral Life Plant Products here with Al the Alchemist. And Al, what are some of the safer ways to make extracts available? To well, a closed loop system is definitely the evolution of the layman you know, butane can blasting. So what we have here is a tank that houses uh, butane, propane, whatever hydrocarbon you're gonna choose. This tank here is where you put your cannabis. This, this unit fits 10 pounds. The butane drops through, extracting your resins, your trichomes. They basically melt in the, in the hydrocarbons. How much would something like this run someone? Close to about 10,000 10, roughly. Closed loop extraction is, uh, it's not new. Uh, it's something that the cannabis industry slowly um, evolved into doing, because it's, it's the way to do it. Well, you mentioned the slow evolution of the cannabis community, but it's- It's actually been a pretty, quick evolution. I was gonna say, it's been well, pretty quick. Just in the last three or four years, this butane blasting has really caught on. And in the last, I would say 18 months, exponentially has grown into a worldwide phenomenon. Everything that we have in our facility, we try to replicate what our brothers and sisters down south are doing. You know, Washington has a regulated uh, closed loop system. They have uh, fire marshals that come in and regulate it. Those people post how they're being regulated, and we try and go off of that. Their city is a little bit behind in the whole process and the whole law, but we're trying to get ready so that when they do open the door, we have everything you know that's going to go abide by the law the way they want to do. You brought up your facility right there, and obviously that would be something we'd be fascinated to see, but we can't go there. What are some of the 
problems with having a facility. Well, the biggest issue with that is the whole legality of it, right? You know, the government's really looking for people who have uh, equipment that they think we're not really certified to be able to be using yet. But what they don't understand is that some of us are actually um, from a you know, chemistry background, we understand what we're doing, and we always do a lot of research before we do anything. With all of the proper equipment, you can do that the right way without anybody being harmed, and especially the patient who's smoking that product in the end. After meeting with our anonymous extract artist, we left the city and went to a private medical grower's property, who showed us his trailer full of concentrate making equipment, which he valued at $18,000. We also had to preserve his identity. Okay, so this is your closed loop system. We got your butane recovery tank uh, here, and recovery pump here, and I'm saying this strongly, explosion proof with your condensers in there that sit in dry ice. So why is secrecy such a necessity? Secrecy, well, first of all, there's a lot of uh, people that rip off gardens and, and do home invasions, so obviously don't want to be shown. Number two, police officers and stuff don't know the full extent of the laws, I, I believe. Just recently, um, a, a person that was making extractions got raided, and they used the terms it was a meth lab to get their warrant, right? So I just don't want that happening, right? I, I rely on my medicine. I need my medicine, so. Do you think the police offer any protection to the medical growers and the medical... i say it's 50-50. Where I live, um, 100%. I have alarms right to the police, and if anything happens, and... They're there, they're there, and I know that it's accidentally gone off, and they've been there two minutes. So you know, it's like I guess like a bank getting real. A dry run. Exactly. Yeah. I know. I know my rights. So I walked into the yard and just basically took control. You're not gonna come and tell me what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna kind of tell you what to do, right? I'm legal here. It's I'm telling you straight up what it is, right? They just walked in and looked and did my plant count and. Everything was fine. Can you, are you allowed to say what your plant count is? Well, I'm 60 grams a day, so four times six, 240. For every one gram you're allowed to, uh, for a prescription, is five grams. I make a, a topical cream for my back, and it's it's amazing. Yeah. So. I was going to say 60 grams a day. If, you, if they were forcing you to smoke it, just this oh, flower yeah, plant. No, no. So then we go from that stage of the oil being recovered over to this part. Now, earlier today, we did a run, and this is the production of it. It's an industrial oven with a high-grade pump, and it gets purged for five days, 125 hours, at a certain degree. So now this should last me until my next crop comes down. While a high court ruling has protected the safe consumption of concentrates, its manufacturing is a dubious process, and obtaining concentrates outside of home production with medically legal bud is also gray market at best. The easiest way to buy concentrates in Vancouver, however, is to go to one of over 100 dispensaries operating in the city, selling cannabis over the counter. The city council is trying to regulate these shops, whereas the federal government is trying to shut them all down. We're here at City Hall to talk to Kerry Jang, one of the councillors spearheading the regulation of the city's pot dispensaries. But today on the front page of the newspaper, Health Canada is threatening to send in the RCMP if these pot dispensaries don't close en masse, period. So we're going to talk to Kerry Jang about the continual antagonization of the city at the hands of the federal government. Uh, I just heard yesterday here in Vancouver that um, Health Canada also sent out notices to some pot shops saying cease and desist, you must close. Yeah. And uh, they didn't tell us they were going to do this, so we'll see what happens. And they've also said earlier that they wanted to come in or that people need to come in and force, mm -hmm. if by force necessary, close down these dispensaries. What are your thoughts on the federal government coming in to... Well, <laughs> to be honest, when we first got the letter, we thought it was a fake. It was bogus because it wasn't on any letterhead or anything. We didn't know who it was. In fact, we looked at it, we said, eh, you know, like, <laughs> this is probably a joke because we get yeah. all, all, all that yeah. stuff. Then we subsequently found out it was genuine. Uh, but what was very interesting was the letter was very nonspecific. Mm -hmm. The RCMP will do what? 
right? Uh, we're checking in with our legal department. Do they have any jurisdiction in the city of Vancouver? We do have our own police force mm -hmm. here. Do they expect us to enforce it on behalf of the RCMP, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we're not going to spend one cent to do that because we, we have a regulatory structure in place. Mm -hmm. The city of Vancouver has over 100 dispensaries. With the federal government wanting to take that number down to zero and the municipal government wanting to reduce that number greatly, we're here at Weeds to talk to the owner, Don, to see how he feels about the increased pressure on his 12 locations. Uh, not only do we contribute jobs and uh, we pay, you know, UIC, Canada Pension, uh, we pay property tax through the rent, uh, corporate uh, income tax, all that kind of thing. But the most important thing is we drain money away from organized crime. Uh, if it comes down to it, I will open my books and show you how many hundreds of thousands of dollars we paid in taxes. And so that kind of makes the government culpable in <laughs> I was going to say, so the government is taking the tax money? Oh yes, absolutely. I can show you the paperwork that we are paying taxes on all, all the marijuana products. Recently, the municipal government here in Vancouver has moved to regulate dispensaries. And we've That's seen correct. the federal government has met that with some resistance, to put it mildly. Go figure. Uh, recently, they've also sent out 13 letters to dispensaries telling them they were required to shut down. Did you receive any of these letters? Have you uh, been... No, not one. We've been searching our email. We've been waiting for Pure Later because I heard they came in through Pure Later and all that kind of stuff, but nothing. So uh, we were almost unhappy that they didn't come because we wanted to challenge this. So, Don, what are we looking at here in front of us? So, what we did is we applied for all of our stores. Here's a development permit uh, for this store, 1232 Burrard Street. These are historic documents. Nobody in, in the history of North America has gone against the, uh, their federal government. It's always been risky to work in this industry, but I feel like this is the biggest threat so far that we've had in a really long time. So, it did make me a bit nervous at first. Um, but recently, I've heard that um, the VPD won't be complying with the things that Health Canada is saying. So I just think that we're just going to stay open and we're going to stay here for our members. With the Vancouver city government trying to regulate dispensaries, have you had a chance to look at the regulations? Yes. What do you think of the regulations as someone who works within the industry? I'm iffy on them, to be honest. Some of them make sense and some of them don't. And a lot of dispensaries, when finding out that they were going to be regulating, just decided to shut down. Mm -hmm. And that kind of sucks that a lot of um, dispensaries felt intimidated by the regulations and by the city. And I don't know, we, we've gone along with them and we're just, we just want to stay open mostly for the members. And as a medical dispensary here, that's our main goal, is just to be here for the medical patients. Medical marijuana use is more prevalent in Canada than ever largely thanks to the federally regulated licensed producer system that has allowed 26 marijuana factories to open their doors. But many patients turn to the gray market dispensaries rather than go through the government. I'm here with Colleen and Jaden. Uh, can you guys tell me a little bit about your story? Jaden's had cancer since he's been 11. It's the fourth time he's had it. We've gotten rid of it ourselves three times. And he's, it's brain tumor, medial blastoplastoma. Five months ago, he, they were told him that he was going to pass away within the week. He wasn't going to make it the week. And so when you say you, you beat it yourselves, what was the course of treatment that you found most effective? Um, diet change and uh, the Phoenix Tears, which is the cannabis. Anything besides radiation and chemotherapy, you have to pay for yourself. And we've, in the last year, well, not last year, I'd say last two years, we've spent over $200,000 on this treatment. What are your thoughts on dispensaries and what have dispensaries meant as far as your personal experience to access or people that you've encountered uh, experience with access to cannabis? Well, for us, my dad has 21 stores, so we basically have been going through him for the Phoenix Tears, which we've been doing now for a year and a half now, I think. So with the exception of cost, which you've mentioned, have there been any other downsides or, or negative side effects to cannabis as a treatment? Made me a little bit of highness. <laughs> but I used to smoke like five grams, ten grams a day. Now I'm just down head down the hip. Now I'm down. The natural way is what is doing wonders, and people are not, it's not harmful. They're not coming down with secondary cancer. They're actually living their lives out like they should be. Uh, Jaden, Colleen, thank you guys so much for sitting down and sharing with me. Thank you.
Well, thanks for letting us tell a little bit of our story. When you hear the government talk about people involved in this community and refer to them as criminals and kind of make reference to shoddy business practices and the dangers you know, that these people are when, when it comes to that kind of stuff, number one, I really can't blame them in the sense that there are a lot of people out there doing stupid things. There are a lot of people out there who don't have the best interest at heart that want to open up a dispensary, that want to start making extracts, you know, just for the money, you know, not for the sake of patients. And um, with that, that's why the government is really starting to crack down. But, you know, in our defense, I really believe that we're more educated than the government about this. You know, we recently had the, the RCMP bust a car and they found a bunch of Rick Simpson oil and syringes and they were telling people that people are shooting up this oil. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can't give anybody any credibility that they would say something like that without any research behind it. So what would something like this run someone on the street? Now with this, this is some of the best sativa that we've seen around in a minute. And uh, if you were to find it on the street, this 30, 40 grams, it would be about two TGs, street value. Probably more where I'm from. <laughs> So we are at a cannabis grow, and we can't tell you where we are. Al, why is there the necessity for secrecy? Well, there's a, there's a lot of people that don't like to uh, put the time and effort it takes to produce something like this, and they would rather throw on ski masks and come and rob places like this. So you're not a grower here, you're just a no, cannabis no. expert. A lot of people that are involved in situations like this just are not willing to step, step forward and put their face on camera. Mm -hmm. so, Myself not having any personal involvement and having, um, a, you know, knowledge of what it takes to make a plant like this, like... Do you think that might have any reason why gardens like this can still flourish? Is because people haven't found what they're looking for in the government-approved licensed producer system? Oh, for system? sure, for sure. I've, I've seen weed from four different licensed producers. It was consumable if you're in a pinch, but not a chance would I say that it's medicine. Not a chance would I consume that to alleviate any of my ailments that I deal with on a daily basis. Or even for recreational purposes, there would be no enjoyment smoking that cardboard schlag that a lot of these guys are putting out. The difference is, these are individuals that love this. This is what they do. This is what they do. They want to wake up and do this. The other side of the game, federally produced cannabis or federally recognized produced cannabis. They're people that have a lot of money at stake. They only care about the dollar. This has body to it. I'm, I'm standing in this room. I can smell it. I oh, can yeah. visibly see the trichomes without having to, you know, like, it's proper. This is insane. <laughs> it's like, you're in this room, and it's so much fun. And then you're like, oh, yeah, they kill people over this shit, don't they? They put people in jail for life over this. But then when you're around it, though, you're like, how could you be so bad at this plant? Oh, that smells so, it's not like a blueberry smell. The grow we just left was heavily fortified. We couldn't show you this, but it was surrounded by razor wire and barbed wire. And the owner of the grow said that this was because so many grows have been attacked by rip-off people looking to rip off the, the weed, bringing guns, uh, bringing violence to them. And so this grower said that he wasn't going to take it and has fortified his property and gotten prepared. But because it was all Rockstar, you can smell it on your fingers, you can smell it on your clothing. I'm not going to shower tonight, I'll tell you that much. Uh, I'm very excited to see this next place we're going to, though. And we assume it's going to be more of the same with the fortification because that's been something that's been uh, echoed to us a lot by people in this community, that the big fear now is not necessarily of the government, be it federal or provincial or municipal, it's of ripoff artists. We're here with Enrico Bouchard. Enrico, inventor of the sublimator, you work with nutrients. Can you tell us a little bit about why we're here, not specifically where we are though, I guess. Yeah, well, we're in this undisclosed location because they called us because they had a little problem with certain plants. And uh, my associates at Sublimator and uh, Neutral Life Plant Product, we come here and try to fix the problem. So we know these guys for a long time and we've been taking care of them and uh, we make sure that uh, their plant makes it uh, to the best uh, with the product uh, all the way to the end, basically. Well, well let's go see some yeah, marijuana. Yeah, let's go, let's go right away. 
Arion's Ultra A's is that big, big one you're gonna be seeing on the left side. And uh, after that, the rest is uh, holy eye candy. This looks like the like a, a weed monster. Like normally, you get a little, you get a little bag of cannabis, and it'll be like, like it'll have a couple of these in there. But this, and so the, the smell is coming from the terpenes. From the terpenes, yes. And what are what are terpenes? The essence of the plant. You have the medicines, but the essence, the smell, the everything that separates her from any other of the uh, the, the marijuana plants. Oh, what about this one right here? Look how big that is. This, my friend, is the Romulan. Yeah, I don't know what went into it. The turps but... are all over the place. Oh, you can. Oh, I just want to rub my face in it. It smells so good. Oh, that's nothing. We got so much more to see. My goodness. <laughs> so what's going on right here? Right now, well, it's the first stage of drying. Is, is it unsmokable when it's not dry? It's unsmokable like this uh, due to the water content. It's about 70% water inside of this. So you're going to lose about 70% in weight just in the drying. Uh, from that moment on, you can smoke it. Oh, it smells so good. I could live here. Yes, 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 yes. Do you think that regulation is something that's probably going to hurt the industry, or do you? You know, it depends on how they regulate it. Most likely, they will regulate it with their standards and uh, their employees. The best way to do it, you know, it's just find people who are already in the market and hire them. I believe that we need to be the example of regulation. If they want to do any regulation, I believe they need to do it off of us, or they could just use us as an example. Well, actually, would you ever want to work for the government? Um, you know, me personally, I don't think I would ever want to work for the government because, you know, I like being free. I like, you know, doing things my way. And uh, my whole life, I've never really liked having a boss since, you know. And Guy Fox was an anarchist after all. Yeah, exactly. Guy Fox, I mean, he, he, you'll never catch him with Yes, so. that's true. Yeah. Canadian cannabis will be in legal limbo for a while, even if the government decides to legalize. The gray market weed industry is growing and innovating rapidly in spite of the dangers posed by violent criminals looking to rip off pot gardens and governments looking to drastically regulate or destroy the dispensary system. But with defiance at the core of the sometimes sketchy, unregulated marketplace, there are certainly more battles ahead for the growers, dispensary owners, and concentrate enthusiasts of Canada.